So I'd like to welcome you all. Um, we have some really big update for you today, so I hope um, you take notes and you can make uh, answers questions at the end. Here is what we're going to follow. What we're going to tell you today. Um, we are going to cover an industry update and progress update on the Commission's Executive Director Search, and I will be handling um, that part of the webinar. How to promote your destination at our I-80 Visitor Centers. The 2016 Nebraska Passport Program Update. 2016 Tourism Conference Update. The Commission Marketing Efforts, How to Promote Your Events and Destination on VisitNebraska.com. Progress and Developments with Agra and Echo Tourism, Upcoming Events for the Nebraska Tourism Commission, and we will finish out with Grant Opportunities. If you have any questions, you can email those to Jen Gerty at Nebraska.gov to be answered live at the end of the webinar. <clears throat> so first I will talk about um, the Commission's Executive Director Search. First, an update. If you hear us but do not see the webinar, refresh your browser because we have had some te technical difficulties to start out. So hopefully that, that will get you online so you can see and hear us also. I will give you a quick update on the executive director search. I am the chairman of that committee and um, I'll give you us, uh, the list of names who are on that executive search committee. Uh, Roger Dixon from Mecca and also a tourism commissioner. Roger Kuhn with the Nebraska Game and Parks and he is a current Nebraska commissioner. Jeff Mall from the Lincoln Convention and Visitors Bureau. Lisa Burke from the North Platte Visitors Bureau and also a tourism commissioner. Keith Baxson from the Omaha Convention and Visitors Bureau. And Mike Kesselring from High Plains um, Homestead in Northwest Nebraska. So we had our first meeting last Wednesday as a teleconference, um, Wednesday afternoon, and we met with um, two people from Human Resources the State of Nebraska. Uh, Margie Bell, she is our representative. She's been signed to help us with this process. So it was a good time for us to get started. Um, we are in the research phase. Um, we are looking at what qualities we want in the new executive director, and we have, um, we have surveyed staff, tourism staff, um, commissioners and NIDA and NACVB and ask them for their input so that we can get off to the right foot and know what the industry wants. We are crafting a job description. Um, this is our chance to make this position the best that we can for staff and for the tourism industry, so we're going to take time and make sure we perfect that. We are doing a salary research. Um, what salary do we need in this position to get the best candidate? Uh, we are also looking into our process. What can we do? How will we handle the interviews? How will we weed through the resumes that come in? And then also perfecting our timeline. Um, it's, we're not, we're not going to rush through the process. We're going to make sure we do it correctly. We're going to take our time and get the best candidate we can. So right now we don't have another meeting set up. Um, we're just really in that research phase and coming up with that job description before we can post it. So um, we'll try to keep you informed on where we are in the process, uh, but that is the first step we have taken. So now we will move on to um, the travel consultant program. I'm giving this report from Michael. Um, we have 14 visitor centers staffed this season. Um, you can see the list there, the Archway, Brady Westbound, Cody Eastbound, Kearney Eastbound and Westbound, Kimball Visitor Center, Melia Hill Westbound, North Platte Visitor Center, Okalala Eastbound and Westbound, Omaha's Henry Dorley Zoo and Aquarium, Sarpy County Tourism, and York Eastbound and Westbound. Um, our tourism uh, consultant season goes from May 16th to September 9th, so we're about halfway through that process, uh, through that season. Now, if you want to distribute any brochures at the Visitor Center, call Michael Collins at 402-471-3795. Um, please give Michael a call before you send your brochures or your literature uh, because a lot of those visitor centers don't have ample room so they want to make sure they have the room so they can uh, adequately display it. And then Michael also likes to know what, what product is in those so um, we make sure and don't have duplicates and we cover the state well. So any questions just give Michael Collins a call. And now we will move on to Amanda. Yes. 
Good afternoon. Um, it, I wanted to give you an update on the Nebraska Passport Program uh, this year, 2016. Uh, obviously, it, it launched on May 1st and will run through the end of September, September 30th. Uh, so we're just hitting the mid midpoint of the program this year. Largely, we've heard nothing but positive things so far for this program, uh, both from travelers and participants who are experiencing parts of their state that they never have before. Uh, we're hearing that a lot of folks from eastern Nebraska are going west and, and visiting the sites in the western half of the state, which is tremendous, and vice versa. So it's really connecting the state in a neat way, which is one thing we really appreciate about this program. In terms of participation, we're hear hearing some record high numbers. So at this point, we've distributed over 16,000 books and still going. Uh, we've had around over 5,000 um, either new downloads or updates of the mobile app. So we're seeing people using their smartphones in the instance um, that they, you know, arrive at a destination outside of the operating hours, etc. Or if they're just smartphone savvy. In terms of the demographics of our participants, we're seeing, again, broad representation both within Nebraska and across the country. So uh, as of right now, 22 states have been participating, essentially uh, participants from you know, Michigan to Arizona, California, New Jersey, Alabama. People from all over are traveling across Nebraska and using the Nebraska Passport Program to do so, to structure their travels. Um, and what's more, this is a, a bigger number than we've ever had in the past. Uh, participants from 220 Nebraska communities are participating. Last year, I think there were participants from only about 125. So we're seeing some really good saturation in Nebraska participants, which is really exciting. Again, it, it helps connect people to their state. So the most popular stops to date, again, stay tuned for more updates throughout the summer. Uh, but the most popular shop so far is Indigo Bridge Bookstore and Cafe in Lincoln, uh, down in the historic Kmart district. Highly recommend. Also right across from my Ivana Cone if you want some ice cream. Um, then the Missouri River Basin Lewis and Clark Visitor Center in Nebraska City is coming in second. There's, they've seen, I know, at, at least 500 participants come through their doors, which is tremendous. Uh, and then Eat Restaurant in Dodge, Nebraska is rounding out our top three in terms of our popular stops. So, Again, we're seeing uh, a good amount of participation. You can see over here Jennifer from Lincoln, who is a passport traveler from this year. She and her three-year-old son are trying to make it to all 80 stops, which is ambitious, especially given uh, with the three-year-old. I hear that's you know difficult traveling, but she uh, she loves it. She said she has been to so many stops that they had never heard of and had the best time. So if you haven't yet considered getting out and visiting anywhere from 1 to 80 stops, I encourage you to do so. If you need booklets to distribute um, or if you have generally any other questions about the Passport Program, you can email me at amanda.barker at nebraska.gov or call me at 402-326-4896. Uh, a quick word about 2017, the applications will likely be out sometime in op October uh, so that you have not missed anything yet if you're eyeing uh, the 2017 Passport Program. The last update I'll talk about is uh, focuses on Nebraska Tourism Cares. This is our service and philanthropy oriented program that we kicked off here at the begin beginning of 2016. Um, and the first thing you need to know is that we're renaming it. Um, so instead of Nebraska Tourism Cares, it will be Nebraska Tourism Serves. I'm really trying to hit at that uh, a more indicative name of what the program does. So it's our service opportunity and service project based program. So it's the same program, just a new brand. Um, a quick word on the first two projects, which happened in May and June uh, in Garing and Shadron respectively. It was a tremendous success. We saw over 30 volunteers participating um, and in total contributed 260 man hours uh, between the two projects. So we, we moved the needle to help some of these destinations both in Gehring and in Shadron and quite frankly it was a lot of fun. I know I'm, I'm feeling invested in the the success, their future success of both the historic Rubidoux Trading Post and the Cowboy Trail around Shadron. So we did extend the deadline for um, the application to become a, an upcoming service site. We have two remaining projects yet here in 2016. 
Um, that will be Friday, and it should be July 15th. Um, so if you could get in an application, if there is some destination that you know of in your community, in your neighborhood, in your region that needs a little uh, extra love and attention and, and could use some volunteer man hours applied towards this project, we'd be happy to hear about it and consider it for the next Nebraska Tourism Serves uh, project. And you can go to our industry page um, and find that application there. Or simply, if you wanted to email me at amanda.barker at nebraska.gov, I could shoot you that uh, information real quick as well. So that, those are my two updates. Next up is Lisa. Good afternoon. I am Lisa Carnatz. I'm the business consultant for Nebraska Tourism. And I'm happy to share with you about the upcoming Nebraska Tourism Conference that will take place in October. And it will be October 18th through the 20th, which is a Tuesday through Wednesday. Tuesday through Thursday, and it will take place at the Gearing Civic Center in Gearing, Nebraska, hosted by our CBB out there. Um, your information is found online at visitnebraska.com. The theme this year is Renewing Our Legacies, and so we hope to see you all out there. Registration will open for this August 1st. You, um, there will be a news press release going out soon to let you know that and remind you to get signed up for that. We have some great speakers coming in for that. Our um, head, headquarters will be at the Monument Inn and Suites, which is right next door to the Garion Civic Center. So you can also go online at the same place, our website, visitnebraska.com slash industry. You'll find a link there to find out information about the conference, and it will have your lodging information on there. The three different lodging places are Monument Inn and Suites, Hampton Inn and Suites, and Super 8 Hotel for a variety of prices. Also, we are soliciting sponsors for the conference right now, and this is really small to see. <laughs> So if you have to get your glasses on and read it, but I, this information is not <coughs> online, but I can send you a sheet with it on. Um, the different levels are homesteader, pioneer, explorer, fur trader, and sower. And these are the levels that we send out to different vendors or organizations and ask them for their sponsorship and our help in putting on the conference. And under each different level there, they get a different package. And it was, it's explained on your screen, but I'm not gonna take the time to explain it. Um, it's basically, you know, registrations and ad size and whatever else they need. So that is what I wanted to share with you. And so next up is Jen. Thank you, Lisa. I am Jen Jurdy. I'm the Public Information Officer for Nebraska Tourism, and I will be giving a highlight of some of our marketing efforts right now. Um, we are in full swing for the summer, so we have a lot of ads out right now, including in Midwest Living, Parents, Leisure Group Travel. Um, there's some more listed on the screen, and one we just got, I think last week in the mail, was a Go Escape one, which has a great ad for Homestead National Monument in there from us. Um, brand 2.0, which is the Nebraska Nice, Visit Nebraska, Visit Nice Brand 2.0, has been approved by the commission is, and is in the works, so we'll be excited to share a lot more of that here in the near future. Also, we are planning a media tour for late September into early October. 20 to 25 national and international journalists will be going from Scotts Bluff to Gearing to Fort Robin Alliance area. We're also planning other media tours for 2017 and those dates will be finalized soon also. Also, the fall and winter travel guides are almost done. We're kind of getting those last minute edits on them before they go to print. So we should have them in our office by mid-August ready for the state fair and ready to distribute to a lot of people here very soon. Um, of course, part of marketing is promoting our great passport program that Amanda just highlighted. And we've done a lot of efforts um, across the state when it comes to um, these partnerships with the Omaha World Herald, also with the Kearney Hub, Scotts Bluff Star Herald, and the North Platte Telegraph. Each Sunday, there is a spread, like you see on here, um, just kind of highlighting two different passport stops. We've also had 16 appearances on NTV programs, five appearances on Pure Nebraska, two appearances on KNOP in North Platte, five appearances on KETV in Omaha, five appearances on KLIN, the radio station here in Lincoln, 
and five appearances on 1011 at four here in Lincoln. We also have the Explore Nebraska videos that are playing on some of those TV stations across the state. They're great um, minute to two minute long videos highlighting 15 different passport stops. And if you want to see those videos, you can find them on our YouTube channel, which you can find by searching Nebraska Tourism on YouTube. We're also working with our corporate partners again to promote the passport program through their corporations. Uh, they are all listed on our screen. A lot of these people are having booths or having little, entry, little snippets in their newsletters and kind of just helping us get the word out about the passport program and encouraging their employees to participate. These are some great numbers that our folks from Bailey Lowerman just recently shared with us. This first bar here shows June 2013 to the end of May 2014, and those are our numbers um, from the website. And if you look at 2015 to 2016, which is the last bar here, we've had a 107% increase of people coming to our website. And this is happening a variety of ways. Some people just typing in visitnebraska.com because they heard it on the radio or saw it on the side of a bus. There's also people searching for Nebraska. And because that's the first thing that pops up when it, there's a Google search, a lot of people are drawn to that. Of course, on visitnebraska.com, you can promote your destination. And people that have not claimed their destination on their website, please on our website, please do it by August 1st, because if you do that, you will then be included in the listings of the Nebraska Travel Guides for 2017. Now, if you had already claimed your destination last year, it's still claimed. You're just fine. Don't worry about going and doing it again, unless you want to update what's actually printed in there. Also, the description from your page will be used in the listing, but we're going to do a max of 80 words, so we do have the discretion to kind of adjust if it's more than 80 words in there. And if you have any questions about claiming your destination, we're always happy to help you walk you through it, send you instructions, so just call our office and we will help with that. Also, promote your events on our website. Of course, that's a great way to get the word out about events, and that's another thing where if you need help with it, you can call our office and we will help you out. Um, one example that shows why it's so great to put these events on our website is that 4th of July press release that was just sent out right before the 4th of July included events that were first picked because they were put on the website. We can't know about everything going on across the state and there are a lot of 4th of July events so this is just a great example. So when we were picking them those were some of the first that we picked because they were supplied to us and, and great job for those people for getting them on our website. I think it's up next for Karen. All right. Thanks, Jan. I'm Karen Collars, Agritourism Consultant for Nebraska Tourism. And our main thing here with the Agri Ecotourism Workshop is just that we want to make sure you get the date on your calendars. The 2017 workshop will be held in Broken Bow on February 21st through the 23rd, um, 2017, and it will be held in Broken Bow, Nebraska. So. Again, just mark your calendars, 21st through the 23rd. This will be a Tuesday through a Thursday this, this next time. So I encourage you to mark your calendars. The other thing we wanted to bring to your attention is um, that we were, we're very fortunate that in May of 2015, the Agritourism Liability Act was passed. Um, it became effective August 30th of last year, last summer, about a year ago. And you can find more information about this. It's codified at 82-601 to 82-607. Um, it's very important that you take some time and look this over, learn how to protect your agritourism business. Um, there is special language that you need to have on signs and, where you, and have signs posted on your property to help protect you with the Agritourism Liability Act. Feel free to email me or give me a call if you have any questions with this. My email address is karen.collars at nebraska.gov. Um, ecotourism, Alex. Hi. Uh, all right, we'll go through a little bit of an ecotourism update. Uh, as most of you know, we have the total solar eclipse coming to Nebraska on August 21st of 2017. So mark that down on your calendars. Uh, it's going to be a pretty cool event, and I'm really excited. Uh, we allocated $50,000 to budget for uh, to market this uh, throughout the in the various magazines um, and and websites. So our goal was to build exposure for Eclipse viewing destinations, um, and so far the main ones are in Alliance, 
uh, North Platte or a little bit north of North Platte, um, and Kearney, Ravenna, uh, and Beatrice down in Homestead. So uh, and then we also have, um, we decided a couple different magazines to place ads in, and one of them is Astronomy Magazine. Uh, we're also going to be advertising on their website as well. Um, and then there's also the coalition as well, uh, making efforts to make sure the word is spread out uh, for folks to come view the eclipse in Nebraska, because it's going to be a prime viewing a viewing space for the eclipse itself. Uh, we've got great skies that, that time of the year historically uh, for eclipse viewing, and, and it's going to be really something special. Um, also want to just give a little update on the Cowboy Trail. Uh, recently there have been a couple of events that have been on the Cowboy Trail. Uh, one is the Cowboy Ultra. It was a uh, ultra marathon. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a, uh, it's a running event that is either usually longer than about 36 miles or so. Um, so it's longer than a regular marathon and this one in this case is much, much longer. Um, and uh, that, that went on in the very beginning of uh, June and we had, uh, there was a couple teams, there were three team, really teams that participated and three soloists and one, one of the soloists even made it 106 miles in 25 hours which is absolutely incredible. Uh, if you look at the heat index that week, it was about 105, so it was really, really hot up there in the Sand Hills, but um, they, they did a great job and, and ran really smartly as well. Um, they ran through the night uh, from, from Saturday morning uh, and got to Norfolk uh, around 3 in the afternoon. So um, it was an amazing feat. You can see the second picture on there. Uh, that's the first place team. It was a crew out of Omaha. Uh, and they're some pretty salty guys. They, they did a good job and, and uh, ran a really smart race. So, um, and everyone had a great time. Uh, everyone I talked to at the uh, finish line said it was a fantastic event. Um, totally do it again. They're going to spread the word about it and see if we can't get a lot more people to come and do it next year. And it was pretty cool. Um, also, Tour de Nebraska happened here recently and they used sections of the Cowboy Trail on their route this year. Uh, they were up in the Valentine, Springview, uh, Bassett, Newport area. Um, everybody up there I know had a great time, uh, it was beautiful weather and uh, it, it's just really cool watching cycling tourism take place here in Nebraska and watch be these businesses uh, benefit from the dollars that cyclists are bringing to Nebraska. And uh, when I was up there for a couple days for that, you'd see license plates uh, from all over the country and uh, when you're out there riding with people, you know, these people are coming from, you know, Kansas, Ohio. Pennsylvania. They're coming from all over the United States uh, to come and ride in Nebraska, which is really cool. And a lot of them are, have, have some sort of tie to Nebraska, uh, whether it be you know family or they grew up here, that kind of thing, and they just want to come back. And, and uh, this offers them a great way to come and experience and uh, experience Nebraska. And I think one of the best ways to experience Nebraska is on a bike. So um, another thing coming up is uh, Lake McConaughey public hearing. Uh, if you have any uh, thoughts, ideas, that kind of stuff, uh, uh, Nebraska Game and Parks is coming up with a new master plan for Lake McConaughey and uh, in the Lake Ogallala area as well. Um, that's going to be on August 4th. Uh, keep an eye out. I don't, I don't know the exact time yet. It will be in the evening. Uh, Game and Parks will have a press release coming out, I believe, in the next couple days. So keep an eye out for that. Um, that's coming up. So if you have any thoughts, ideas on how to uh, improve or uh, you know, make better Lake Mac, Lake Ogallala area, uh, come and voice your opinion. There's going to be a public hearing period and, uh, and uh, well, I don't know, we'll see you out there maybe. So um, that's about all I got for now and um, back to Karen. Okay, we have a number of events that will be coming up here and we've mentioned quite a few of them already so we just want to recap. One that will be here shortly is the Nebraska State Fair. And Nebraska Tourism will again have our tourism room going, Nebraska's Tourism's Wide Open Imagination Zone. The dates of the fair is August 26th through September 5th. The activities in our room will be available from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily. So stop by. We've got some fun things planned for the room. We're going to be um, having a train, be, ha having it to where people can experience a train ride across Nebraska. You can once again do the send a postcard from Nebraska. A variety of photo opportunities. Um, we have also have Fontenelle Forest Raptor Recovery. We'll have some of their birds there certain days of the throughout that period. So take some time and when you're out there swing by the our room and say hi. 
If you have any marketing materials that you would like for us to have available in that room, feel free to send them to the Nebraska Tourism Commission office and then write on the box or your materials that it's for the state fair and then I have the address listed there. If you can have those materials um, to our office by August 3rd in Lincoln, that would be great. A few other events that will be coming up that are right around the corner is Husker Harvest Days. We will have a booth at that, which is September 13th through the 15th. Again, the Nebraska Travel Conference in Gearing is October 18th through the 20th. Uh, Nebraska Tourism Commission has approved having a booth again at the 2017 National Western Stock Show. And so those dates will be January 7th through the 22nd of 2017. Um, if you're interested in helping with that or have ideas for the booth or uh, just want some general information or have any questions, feel free to give me a call. My work cell is 308-249-3220, or again, my email is karen.collars at nebraska.gov. And once again, make sure you mark your calendars for the 2017 Agri-Ecotourism Workshop, which is scheduled for February 21st through the 23rd in Broken Bow, Nebraska. Um, and from there, we'll go to Heather with our grants. Thanks, Alex. Hi everyone, I'm Heather Hogue, the Deputy Director of the Tourism Commission, and I am here to give you some updates about our grant opportunities. Um, I'm happy to announce that this year we will have both of the grant programs open on August 1st. That will be the Tourism Marketing Grant Program and the Community Impact Grant Program. Um, if you've applied for either of them in the past, know that you can apply again. Um, we encourage fresh marketing ideas. Um, and if you have any questions at all as you're creating your applications, um, feel free to give me a call. Uh, that's what I'm here for. I'm a great contact for you to bounce questions off of, ask me what might be eligible, what's not eligible. Uh, when the application guidelines come out, they will be posted on our website. If you have trouble finding those, uh, let me know and give me a call. The Tourism Marketing Grant is the one that's been a long-standing grant program for the Commission. Um, it offers funding for a variety of marketing projects for all types of budgets. Um, and this is the one where you can apply to market anywhere outside a 100-mile radius from either your event region or um, a general marketing project. The funding amount for this um, grant program has been raised um, just recently at the June 24th meeting, the commissioners voted to raise the cap per project to $25,000, um, and that can be anywhere from $2,000 to $25,000 that you can apply for, for an individual project. It does have some match requirements in there of 25%, half of that can be in-kind or donated services. Um, and as I mentioned, the guidelines will be available August 1st with the deadline of September 15th, um, and we hope announce them the first week of October. The reimbursement deadline for this program and the Community Impact Program will be May 31st of 2017. So all marketing projects will need to be completed by then. The Tourism Community Impact Grant Program um, is the marketing assistance grant for organizations hosting national or international caliber events with the potential to attract a significant percentage of out-of-state visitors and to generate favorable press coverage for Nebraska. Um, the goal of this program is think big, promote big events. Um, the funding amount allows that. This year the commissioners voted to raise the funding amount for projects up to 250000 So um, as with the other grant program, if you have questions about what's eligible, if your event's eligible for this one, um, you can also apply for both programs. So know that just because you apply for a community impact grant doesn't mean you can't also apply for a marketing grant. You can apply for both. The community impact grant does have a dollar for dollar match required on this one. Um, and the grant schedule is the same. The guidelines are available August 1st with the deadline of September 15th, and we hope to announce the 1st of October. Um, this page will show you just a few other opportunities of places where you might be able to look for funding sources. Um, some of our partner state agencies, and they can give you a variety of different ideas or partnership possibilities, so feel free to contact them. 
If you have other questions about the grant program, you can contact me anytime, and it's heather.hoag at nebraska.gov. Um, I want to thank you for joining us for the webinar today. Um, we'll go ahead and start taking questions. If anybody wants to join me back up here to answer questions, we can do that, or we'll fly by the seat of our pants. First question's for you, Amanda, so. All right. I should maybe just go see. Okay. <laughs> Shoot it at me. Um, Nebraska Tourism serve sites. When do you project that those projects will be carried out? Good question. Um, I think we'll be able to announce what those those remaining two service sites will be by the end of this month, July. So I would imagine that those service projects can take place anytime in. I mean, as early as late August, although that'll be a short time frame. So late August to anywhere up to December, if the project is um, obviously kind of weather appropriate. Um, so if there's a project that requires more indoor work that can be done um, despite perhaps some cold weather and or snow, because we all know Nebraska, it can be done any, these remaining two projects, short answer, can be done anytime between end of August and December. Great. Yeah. And Karen, someone out of Grand Island asked if you are still looking for volunteers for the booth at the State Fair. For at the State Fair. Um, for the State Fair, what we're looking at doing is the Nebraska Tourism Commission and staff will be manning the booth. If there's somebody that's out there that would like to swing by and spend a couple hours to help relieve every now and then, we'll sure take the help as well. So, love to see you. That's all the questions I had. Did you have any, Heather? No. All right. Well, we're good then. Thanks, everyone.